Hello, hello. Welcome back, everyone. Today is restorative yoga on our pandemic yoga uh, journey together. And as you can see, I have a guest star today. Um, David is going to be joining us and um, he's going to be my guinea pig, which I'm actually really excited about because that means I can show you adjustments that you can make at home um, rather than trying to move in the moves and talk at the same time and catch my breath. I'm very excited about it. This is going to probably be the most relaxing yoga class for me all week. <laughs> um, so as always, please do what works for you and your body. Um, I'm not there to help you, but hopefully this is helpful and you're able to make some adjustments um, seeing how I adjust him. And please have all of your blocks ready. Um, so if you have your toilet paper for your, for your blocks, that's great. Um, if you have a strap, a tie, a belt, um, a bolster, very, very important. And then I added a towel because um, I wanna make sure he's got bad knees and I wanna make sure he's got lots of cushion for his knees. So uh, with that being said, find a comfortable seated position. We are gonna start with meditation. Um, it is a little bit of a true meditation, meaning not one of our, our quick couple of minutes. Um, so find something very, very comfortable, comfortable position. Um, so David, sit up please. And then go ahead and sit on your bolster facing me. Okay. Sit cross-legged or whatever is comfortable for you. You're going to be here for a little while, so is that going to be comfortable on your knees? Yeah. Okay. If you need to, you can walk the ankles a little bit further forward. And then I'm going to put my leg back here. Just try to lean up against my leg. There you go. Good. So the bolster is really, really good because it gives him a little extra height in his hips. Otherwise, there's no way he can sit cross-legged for that long. As it is, he's probably going to have to adjust. <laughs> so I am going to go into a modified hero's pose. So once you're in your comfortable position, go ahead and close your eyes. And bring your hands either in a circle with the thumbs touching and the fingers on top of each other, right in front of uh, your belly button. Or if you'd prefer, you can um, bring the palms down on the thighs or palms up, maybe uh, point your finger and thumb barely touching. It's your choice. So we're gonna take just a couple of easy breaths here. In through the nose, out through the nose. And try to find balance in the breath. Same amount of time breathing in, same amount of time exhaling. So we're going to go ahead and do our alternate nostril breathing to prepare for meditation. So David, go ahead and bring your thumb and pinky out as if you're doing it. Hang 10, dude, good. And now pop out your ring finger, and you're gonna place your thumb right underneath your nostril. Inhale through that nostril. Hold it for just a moment, and then take your ring finger, plug the other nostril, and exhale out. Inhale through that same nostril. And then switch, exhale out. So try not to put too much pressure on the nostril itself. You're just sealing it. Good. Other side. Exhale. If you put too much pressure on the nostril, you'll find it's hard to inhale in. Perfect. Three more rounds of that. And I might actually be able to check the comments this time. We'll save it for after meditation though.
two more full breaths through both nostrils. So go ahead and settle into your meditation. And we're going to do a sensory meditation today. So that means you are going to connect with the world around you using all of your different senses. So we're going to start with our hearing. That's the easiest to usually uh, zone in on. So I want you to pay attention to every little thing you hear. What does your breath sound like? Is it long and even? If you're inside, try to Zone in on sounds outside. Do you hear a little bird in the background tweeting? Do you hear the rush of cars? Do you hear dogs barking? Now bring your sense of hearing inside. Can you hear your family in the other room? Are they talking? Are they cleaning? Maybe they're starting to cook dinner. Now bring your focus to your sense of smell. One of the benefits of the crazy time that we're living in is having nice clean air. So does the air smell different than it normally does? Can you feel a crispness when you breathe in through the nose. Do you smell some flowers maybe? Now that it's springtime, things are starting to bloom. Again, if your family's in the other room, what do you smell? Are they making dinner? Does it smell good? Are they cleaning? Does it smell like Lysol or bleach? <laughs> do any of those smells spark an emotion in you? Is it good? Is it bad? There's no right or wrong. Just notice that emotion and let it go. Now our sense of smell and our sense of taste are directly connected. So go ahead and bring your focus to your sense of taste.
what's going on in your mouth? Is your mouth watering? Are you salivating because your family's making dinner and it smells good? Or are you starting to notice maybe some metallic taste in your mouth? That's something that's very common when you're meditating. Maybe you just chewed a piece of gum or you're trying to keep up on your vitamin C and you can taste that remaining flavor in your mouth. Again, does the flavor ignite a particular emotion in you? Good or bad, there's no right or wrong. Just notice it and then let go of that emotion. So now bring your focus to your sense of touch. The longer we meditate and the more we stay in one place, the more we start to feel all kinds of things. Try to notice those feelings without interacting with them. And use those sensations kind of like a mantra. So as I scan my body, I notice my right middle finger itches my left eyebrow itches, my hairline itches. I can feel a tingling sensation in both of my feet. As the sensations come, notice them, but don't move to interact with them. No itch or tingling or anything is going to kill you. Just notice it and let it pass. Maybe you have a window open and you can feel a slight breeze. Maybe you have a pet that's trying to walk across your lap or flicking you with its tail. What do all of those feelings feel like? Don't interact with them, don't scratch, don't move. Just notice the feelings. It can be very uncomfortable at first to not interact with those things that you're feeling. But ultimately it brings you a little bit more control over your mind and over your focus. And just know that whatever you're feeling will eventually pass and you will probably notice a different sensation somewhere else on the body. So then focus in on that. So you'll notice that I went through all of the senses except for sight. It's a little tricky because your eyes are closed. But go ahead and bring your focus there now. And with your eyes closed, what can you see? It's probably not pure darkness. You might see some flashes of color. You might see some bright lights. Maybe you're sitting facing the sun and the sun is lighting up your eyes.
Take 10 more breaths here. Going back to whatever sense you enjoyed most. Maybe there was a particular sense that really helped you focus and you blocked out the rest of the world. Or maybe there was a sense that you found challenging to focus on and you want to take the next few breaths to really stay in stillness, notice those challenges and let them pass. Last inhale and exhale. Without moving, go ahead and open your eyes. And then we're going to waken up the body because I'm pretty sure are some things falling asleep for you? I would have to readjust <laughs> and I can hold my back straight up like that for a while. I'm still cramping the lower back by holding it. So. Yes. So it's fine to adjust if you have to move in meditation. It's not a big deal. Go ahead and move. The whole point of meditation is finding focus, but also adjusting when you need to. <laughs> Thanks for watching Adolfo. He's very excited to watch you. <laughs> okay, so go ahead and stretch your legs out and give yourself a little shake with the knees. I uh, know you can keep it, but you might want to extend or push it back out so you have room. There you go. Just shake out the knees a little bit. With the knees to the sky, windshield them back and uh, windshield wiper back and forth so the feet stay on the ground. Oh, yeah. And then, yeah, yeah. and slow. Good. Back pops. Yeah. Okay, so before we get started, since you're the guinea pig, is there anything that you want to work on? Any pain points or stuff that you want to stretch? Back, hips, and mm, probably side rib cage. Okay. I'd love to stretch that stuff. Perfect. So, back, hips, and side body is what the request was. So let's go ahead and flip over because we don't want to get into some of these deeper stretches without um, being a little bit warmed up. So come into down dog. Go ahead and walk your hands a little farther forward. Good. And bend your knees just a little bit. Good. And now see how you have a little bit of a curve here? I want you to arch it. So roll other way. That's round. There you go. Arch. Good. Stick your booty out. <laughs> and now start to shift back a little bit so that you have the extension in the shoulders too. Should I straighten the legs or? Not yet. Relax your head. There you go. Perfect. So now you have the nice flat line from your wrists out through your tailbone. He's really tight in the hamstrings. There's no way he'd be able to get this type of extension with straight legs. Go ahead and try to straighten your legs and let's see how it changes. See how the lower back popped up? We don't want that. So bend the knees again just a little bit and arch the back so the tailbone goes to the sky. Good. Three breaths here. Perfect. Go ahead and drop the knees to the ground and let the knees go wide, untuck the toes, and push back into child's pose. So you're going to push your hips towards your heels. Good. So initially, his butt was kind of in the air, his hips were up off the heels, but we want to connect them as much as possible. So if that means walking your hands back a little bit more, that's perfectly fine. So child's pose is, in my opinion, hands down, the best stretch for any kind of lower back problems. Um, so if you struggle with that, 
do a child's pose for five minutes a day and it really, really will help stretch out your back. Um, and it's also um, a little bit of an inversion pose because the hips are higher than the heart. So you're getting good blood flow, excuse me, good blood flow as well. It's also supposed to be one of the most um, restorative poses. So if you're tired and you have not gotten enough sleep in a while, child's pose is supposed to help you kind of catch up and, and get some energy, feel rested. So from child's pose, we're gonna take the hands and walk them over towards my foot here. Good. And so now he's stretching through the side body here. Oh, wow. I've never done that before. <laughs> Rest your forehead on the ground. Good. We want to make sure that all of these restorative poses are supported and relaxing um, so that he's not straining and he's easing into them. Now that you've been here for a couple of breaths, take this hand and reach it a little bit forward, further. There you go. So you're just lengthening this side of your body a little bit more. Do you feel the intensity? Oh, yeah. Good. One more breath. And then go ahead and walk them back to center first. One breath in center, and then walk them to the other side. So even though he's going to feel it on this side more, I can tell looking at him, he's not collapsing this other side. So he still has length in both sides, which is really, really good when you're doing any um, lateral movement side to side. You don't want to collapse one side in order to stretch the other. You want to lengthen both sides. And again, yep, perfect. You, you must have read my mind. Walk that uh, outside hand over, if you can. Get a little bit deeper. Stretch. And then you can stay here as long as you'd like. But when you're ready, come back to center. Now, how are your knees feeling right now? Uh, my shins, because they're on the yeah. ground. They're kind of over it, right? Yeah. So go ahead and come up onto all fours, onto your hands and your knees. And then lengthen one leg back. So you're lengthening the knee. Try to stretch the back of the knee towards the sky. Good. Does that feel good right here? Oh yeah. Yeah, because you had a really, really deep flexion in the knee, and so now we're stretching it back out. Switch sides. And then again, because we don't want to get into some deep stretches without being a little bit warm, we're gonna do some very, very easy core work um, to add just a little bit of heat to the body and um, prepare for some of the deeper stretches. So extend this leg back up again. And lift the foot so that it's where you think is parallel with the ground. Okay. So notice how this hip raised up. We're going to square the hips. There you go. And now, do you feel that your back is swaying just a little bit? I want you to use your abs and try to press your spine into my hand. Perfect. Now, for a lot of people, doing just that is going to add some heat and they don't need to do anything else. If you can, pick up this hand and reach for the wall. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> a little too small for him. <laughs> Good, so you feel your glute working, you feel your core working, and of course everything is holding you together to stabilize because you're trying to balance. So see how your hip is starting to sink up? Good, square it back down, perfect. Square your shoulders a little bit as well, and then release your hand, and then release your foot. 
you want a little extra cushion on your under your knee? Uh, no. no, you're okay. Okay. I mean, for the next one, this is I did that one without. Okay. So opposite side, pick up this leg and bring it to where you think it's parallel. Good. Now, without me moving, see? Good. He squared his hips, but do you see how incredibly swayed his back is? So put the hand back down on the ground first. Bring your abs up. Good. So you're not trying to necessarily round this part of the back, you're just trying to flatten this part. And that will help you engage your core. Now lift the opposite hand if you can. Don't cheat. Don't use the wall. <laughs> Good. So he's not quite long enough, but or he's not. He doesn't have quite enough space. <laughs> but ideally, go ahead and bring this hand back up if you can. You're going to try to reach through the elbow to try to lengthen the side, and then you're going to reach through the heel to lengthen the opposite side. Put the hand down first, and then the knee, and then go ahead and push back into down dog one more time. Good. So it's really easy to overextend in your shoulders here. He's all right, he shifted a little too much at first, but you can still extend a little in your lower back. So try to arch your lower back as though you were sticking your butt out. That's the other way. There you go. Good. Two more breaths. And release the knees to the ground. And then gently sit back. So you can rock over your ankles, or you can bring your feet to one side so that the feet are in the front, and you're sitting on your butt. Mm -hmm. So scoot forward so you have a little bit more room, and then lay back. You're going to scoot forward a little bit more. Both those pop. Yeah. You're an old man. Lots of popping. <laughs> I don't want to be old. <laughs> okay, so let's start by bringing this foot and crossing it over that knee, or that one, whatever. <laughs> Okay, so we're not going to do a lady cross. We're going to do a man cross. Oh, I know that's <laughs> probably a bad example, but um, so guys tend to be really, really tight in their hips. It, it just that's the way it is. So don't feel bad about it. So I'm just going to put a little bit of pressure here. Can you already start to feel the intensity grow? No, I just can't. I'm not applying any. You're doing it all. Yeah, I, can't, I, I can't feel anything yet. Okay, well that's good. Okay, so then I want to release, walk this foot in a little farther, right next to your butt. Good. More. You really gotta put a lot more pressure on. Well. You big guy. If you are ever teaching and putting any kind of pressure on a student, be extremely, extremely gentle. And if they say they want more, then let them do more. So what I'm gonna have you do is now bring this foot up so that it's uh, floating, good. And reach for the back of your thigh or your shin. Just with this hand, and what I'm gonna have you do is take this hand and gently push up. And relax your head onto the ground. So again, this is restorative yoga, so we want him to feel supported so he's not actively engaging and trying to curl up. So can you feel that in your hip? No. Good. <laughs> it's a bicep workout too. Come back, try to hold it for a few more breaths. So we're gonna try to hold things for about five breaths, maybe to 10. So I wouldn't reach for your knee or your shin because you don't have the flexibility for that. Reach underneath your thigh. Oh, it's much easier. <laughs> but we want to make sure we're keeping your alignment too, so. Good. So just two more breaths. Good. 
Go ahead and release it down. And we're going to do the other side, same way. So this foot comes to the ground. Opposite foot comes up. And this hip's a lot different than my other hip. Okay, so he said this side is a lot different than his other hip. That's really normal. Almost all of us are going to have completely different uh, range of motion and flexibility on either side of our body. Maybe an injury, um, maybe you're just right-handed and you use that side more often. So start by gently pushing this leg out. That's not right there. Yeah. <laughs> That's like totally different. Yeah. I so can cross this leg over, not the other way. He almost doesn't even need to bring the bottom foot off the ground. Yeah, this is like, I can't do this on my own. Sitting this is painful. Mm -hmm. But it's not painful now, right? It just feels tight? It's really tight, yeah. Okay. So continue to breathe and make sure you're breathing from your belly and not just your chest. So you should be able, or they should be able to see your belly rise and fall. Good. And we're going to stay here, like I said, five to ten breaths. Maybe stay a little bit longer on this side because he's tighter on this side. Now that you've taken a few breaths, can you walk the bottom foot in a little bit more? Yeah. Okay. So after you've taken a few breaths, check in with your body, see how you feel, and can you do a little bit, uh, take on a little bit more intensity now that you've breathed through that pose a little bit longer? Go ahead and flex this foot more so that you are protecting your knee. What do you mean? Flex your foot. There you go. Flexing the foot will help engage the muscles down um, the sides of your leg in order to protect your knee when it's bent like this. Good. One more breath. And so now we're going to go into something that I have a feeling will be much more challenging for him. So pick this one up again, and now you're going to cross it all the way over. So the girl cross, right? There you go. Perfect. And now we're going to pick up both of these knees towards your chest and grab for the opposite ankle. Now this one is the tight one, remember? So he's probably not going to be able to grab it. So we're going to take a strap so that he can adjust. I think the other one's tighter, right? Yeah, this one's not as tight. Yeah, but that's my point. This one is tight, and you're not going to be able to pull. So grab that. Oh, I won't reach that. Okay, now relax back down to the ground. Yeah. So ideally, what we're looking at, I don't know if you can see, is that we're going like this. Oh, that's amazing. So this knee is going to be easy, right? But this one is not. So there you go. Relax down to the ground and breathe. So it's okay that you're not making the same shape as me. <laughs> Here, why don't you release that and use my leg to keep it in place? Nah, because you're just pushing me that way. <laughs> Relax down to the ground. Okay. Now release your hold on this. There you go. There. So I'm still keeping the leg in basically the, the biggest range of motion that he has without him having to strain holding onto the strap. So do you still feel it in this leg? No. In that, that hip? Um, I, when I had the strap, I could feel it right here. But now, and I feel so, it right through here. Yep. So do you see how you're starting to collapse this foot and it's not really parallel with the ground anymore? Uh, Bring it back so that it's more parallel with the ground. There you go. Rest your head on the ground. What do you mean by parallel? Like, like parallel, not parallel. Well, like this or like. Your shin and calf should be oh, parallel. Oh, you said the foot. You meant. Got it. Yeah. Good. Few more breaths. So I can tell you're holding your breath. 
Do not hold your breath. If you're holding your breath, take it a little bit easier, okay? Or if you just forgot because you're not uh, practicing your breath on a regular basis, which he doesn't practice yoga on a regular basis, so he would be in um, you know, the groove to breathe. So make sure you're breathing. Do not hold your breath. Okay, so we're gonna release, and that foot comes to the ground. Go ahead and switch sides. We're gonna keep this available. Cross it all the way over. Good. Bring the knees up so that the shins are parallel with the ground. You can use that one there. Nope. See how you adjusted to bring your ankle to your knee? We yeah. want the backs of your knees touching. There you go. Now, this one. <clears throat> Try to breathe just through your nose. If you can focus on breathing both the inhale and the exhale through the nose, you will start to build more heat in the body, and the more heat you have in the body, the more you'll be able to ease into this. Now, relax, David. So, David is very much the kind of guy who wants to go to the gym and, like, kill himself in 15 minutes and then not go back for three years. So, <laughs> the point of this is not to push yourself. The point of this is to relax and ease into the pose. And maybe you have some leverage like what I'm doing for him, but mostly you're using gravity to ease into the pose. And so, if you weren't there, I guess we could do it against the wall, huh? You, yes, you could absolutely do it against the wall. So let's do three more breaths here. In through your nose, out through your nose, relax your face. So your face right now looks like you are in pain. Are you in pain? Yeah. Okay, pain or uncomfortable? Mm, very uncomfortable. Okay, there's a difference. Start to pay attention to when you are uncomfortable versus when you are in pain. If you are truly in pain, then back off. That's why you need to know if you can breathe. Because if you can't breathe, it's probably pain and not just uncomfortable. All right, go ahead and release. Bring that foot to the ground. I'll take the strap. Good. And now windshield wiper your knees back and forth. Good, big windshield wipers. Maybe tapping the knee to the ground. Good, come back to center. And now we're gonna come into happy baby. So bring the knees towards either armpit as much as you can and try to grab a hold of the feet, the outside of the feet. Through the center or around the outside? Uh, through the center. And now bring the feet so that they're parallel with the sky. There you go. Perfect. And now while you're here, so let your feet go a little bit wider, if that's okay on your hips. Now while you're here, I want you to think about trying to roll your tailbone so that it touches the ground without letting your head come up off the ground. So do you notice how that just the small movement of about an inch changes how it feels in your hips and yeah. in your, the back of your legs? Yeah. Good. So we're not really rounding in, in happy baby. Instead, we're trying to lengthen the spine. And the more you can round your hips and your tailbone towards the ground, the more you'll feel the intensity in your, your hips um, and the back of your legs. Yep. Right in the hippos. Mm -hmm. Keep breathing. So the other place, do you feel this lengthening in your shoulders? Next to your neck? Yeah, I'm little. Yeah. So when you're really, really tight like him, when you start to roll your tailbone towards the ground, then you're automatically gonna start to lengthen and pull um, your arms and stretch out the sides of your neck. Okay, so bring the feet together, sole the feet together, keep holding on to the outside edges. So the knees are gonna go wide. Good. 
still trying to put the tailbone down? Yes. And so now you should really start to feel it in your shoulders and the sides of your neck. Breathe. I can tell by your face. <laughs> so soften your face and breathe. And if something is too much, tell me. So I love this because you're basically opening up everything but using gravity to do it. So you're letting the weight of your feet in your hands pull you forward, but you're keeping the feet where they are, letting your knees drop open, so you're opening your hips, but you're also stretching out your neck and your shoulders. Your hips, your neck, your shoulders, that's where you keep all of your tension and your stress. How much pressure are you putting on me? Almost nothing. Yeah, okay. It's just gonna split me. <laughs> okay, that's a lot. Okay, go ahead and bring the knees back together, oh. and feet come to the ground. <laughs> Good, and give yourself another windshield wiper side to side, massaging out the lower back. Jeez. <laughs> Take a full breath on either side, so stay and breathe. Exhale back to center. Rock over, stay and breathe. Open up your arms. There you go, good. Back to center. Walk your feet a little bit wider so that they're on the outside edge of either. Yep, and now sweep to one side. So do you notice how that feels a little bit different? Now you're more into the front of your hip? Yeah. Okay. Back to center on the exhale. Rock over. One more time either side. This time, why don't you bring the hands over the head like this, grasping the elbows so that you lengthen your sides. Yeah, it can't really fall as long from the hip. So he said hips, back, and sides, right? Well, we did the back for sure. And now we're just going to open up and release the sides as you rock side to side. Good. Back to center. Okay. So now we're going to do um, some some bridge poses, some supported bridge poses. So go ahead and bring your feet a little bit closer together, about hips distance, and bring your hands next to your sides for support. Okay, so first we're gonna start, and um, scoot that way a little bit on the mat because you wanna be able to extend your legs all the way up. We want enough room for that. Perfect, okay. Bring them back up, knees back up, and lift your hips. Bridge, right? Lift again. Lift again. There. Okay. So rest down. And now extend the legs out. And you should feel the front of your hips, your hip flexors opening. A little bit of an arch in the back, but mostly your bolster or your block, whatever you're using, should be pretty much right underneath the hip flexors. So that just that little arch targets stretching that area of your body. Feet together or? Whatever you want, doesn't matter to me. Now why don't you bring those hands back over the head, grasping the elbows. He yawned, that's a good sign. <laughs> Is it? Mm -hmm. Okay. It is a good sign. Good. Take a few more breaths. Make sure you're still breathing with the belly, not just the chest. Even though it is restorative, we still want to keep those deep breaths. Try to find stillness. Don't rock the feet back and forth.
Now bring your hands to either side to help stabilize you. Palms down. And then bring the feet in and one foot at a time, you're gonna reach straight to the sky. So bring your knees in. Knees in, there you go. Now one foot at a time, straight to the sky. So that you're trying to make an L shape with your body. He's probably gonna need a little help. Other foot too. There you go. Good. Okay, so I'm gonna be right here to support you. And I want you to make sure that you keep your knees as straight as you can. So you're really squeezing your quads, but relax your head back down to the ground. So this is a phenomenal inversion pose. Um, for those of you who don't have a lovely yoga teacher girlfriend, you can use a wall. It's great. Um, but I also like having your hips on a bolster or um, a block just to add a little extra height without going into a shoulder stand, without the, um, the strength or the strain of holding a shoulder stand. So we're gonna be here for a little bit. So relax, close your eyes if you want. Keep your hands palms down so that you can keep them there for support. So I want you to start to engage your abs a little bit so that you're holding the legs there by yourself. Good. So it's a little bit more of an active version, um, but it's still very, very restorative. You just want to make sure that if you are very tight in your lower back, your hamstrings like he is, that you're squeezing with the quads in order to lengthen the back of the legs, and that you're engaging with the abs in order to keep the legs in place. Okay, so your toes are starting to roll forward, bring the legs back so they're perpendicular with the ground. There you go, good. A few more breaths. So go ahead and release the feet to the ground, knees pointed towards the sky. And push up into bridge once again. Stay up, head on the ground. Good. And so we're going to add just a little bit of intensity. Up, up, up. There you go. Okay, so that should be right underneath your tailbone. Does that feel about right? Um, yeah. Okay. A little high. Yeah, I guess where it starts. It should be the um, bottom half of the the block should be basically above your tailbone yeah. onto the lumbar spine. Oh, okay. Okay? Yeah. Okay. So now we're going to do the same thing. Extend the legs out. This is just a little bit higher than the bolster. Extend the legs straight out first. Extend the legs out. Nope. To the ground. There you go. So does that feel different on your hips? Yeah. Yeah, should feel a little bit more of an openness across your pelvic area. Should I be flexing? No. Here? No. This so is, I, I you can like relax. Lower, lower back. A little bit, but not too much. Do you feel a little bit of an arch in your lower back? Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's okay. But not quite a pinch. And there should not be pinching. Just a little bit of an arch. And again, it might feel a little uncomfortable because you're not used to having the pressure of the block right there. But if it's pinching and painful, then back off. Just a little uncomfortable because you're not used to it? Sure. Okay. Where are my hands? On the ground, palms down. There you go. So one thing we do when we're um, doing inversion poses and bridge pose is the shoulders, relax your head to the ground, the shoulders have a tendency to come up around the ears. So make sure that you're pushing the shoulders down, so reaching through the fingertips, and then you're almost trying to lengthen the entire head as one unit. Good. 
neck? Yeah, this one. Just there on the ground. Perfect. Okay, so keeping the hands where they are, bring the feet one at a time so that the knees are pointed towards the sky, feet are on the ground. There you go. Other one. And now you're going to balance on the block. So one foot at a time comes straight up to the sky. So I can tell we moved it not in the right place. Where I had it before was right. There we go. No, where I had it before was right. Come back down. So do you see how the block is tilting with you? Yeah, that was going to tilt with me before, that's why I moved it. You want it a little bit farther up under your back, so that when the legs come up, you have a small arch in your spine and you have a shelf for your lumbar. So that's what I did. Yeah, yeah you don't. Because it was on my tailbone, so I just moved it a little. Excuse me while I grow him. Yeah. Right there. Okay, yeah, that's even higher. Yeah, okay. Okay, okay. So go ahead and come up. There you go. Both feet. Use your abs. Much harder. Breathe. Hands on either side for support. Good. It's slipping. Oh. <laughs> you need to come down. I'm just doing this. Okay, see how you're on the edge, David? You want it to be flat. So what's happening is you're putting too much pressure. Go ahead and release down. Let me see, I'll show you the other block. You're putting too much pressure on the block and you want to be arching your back so that you have and I can do it. a it shelf. requires more active muscle, that's all. Yes. Well, you do have to have a little bit of muscle. So my back is arched and the block is right underneath my sacrum so that I can just rest my feet okay. right over the block. So the trick is making the block not fly out from underneath you. <laughs> yes, the trick is, generally the trick with yoga is, you know, not kicking someone next to you or <laughs> shooting props across the room. That is the trick. Okay, go ahead and release the feet, bend the knees, feet come to the ground. Good, push up, into bridge, perfect, release, and windshield the wiper. Windshield wiper the feet or the knees, perfect. Windshield the wiper. Yeah. Okay, so come back to center, bring your feet a little bit closer together. Not quite that close. Right on about the edges. Perfect. Now come to this side and drop and stay. Hands are in a T for support. Bring your gaze to the other side. And now, and you may not be able to do that, you're going to take this ankle and try to put it on top of this knee. Yeah, much, much more intense, right? We're going to stay here though. No movement. Just breathing. It's fine if the palms are up. I don't care about that piece. Good. So this is kind of like a variation of doing a twist in eagle pose, except um, your knees aren't connected. You've got wide knees. And adding that extra pressure, especially if you are tight and don't have a lot of flexibility, will make this stretch um, make this twist quite intense. So we're going to play just a little bit, really, really quickly. Uh, we're going to take this leg and extend it straight. Good. And now this one, we're going to bring it a little bit further behind. As if you were going to try to reach the hand for the foot, which he's not going to be able to go into Cupid's arrow, but um, he's going to he's going to do the best that he can. 
So ideally, um, the way that you're twisting, uh, you actually usually do the opposite side, opposite foot on top, but we're gonna do a little bit of a funky one here. Uh, ideally, you'd be able to reach the feet, reach the hand with, um, and grab a hold of the foot of a straight leg, and then bind the back foot. It's okay. You what can... freak of nature can do that? <laughs> The freaks of nature that practice yoga on a regular basis. <laughs> okay, go ahead and release. And bring both feet again to the outside edge of the mat. Good. And twist the knees the other direction. So this way. I think I might have to move that way. Yeah, well, well when we get there, we get there. So first, look that way. Good. First, let's see if we can do that. Perfect. And this, just stay here. This works down here. Uh, that should be relaxed. It's not really, you're not really right getting. Right here, but down here is where I'm getting it. The focus should be through your oblique and a little bit of your hip and your hip flexor. So we're going to skip Cupid's arrow on this side because we need to have enough time for Shavasana. It's the best part. So go ahead and release this foot. Come back up, knees to the sky. Um, bring your knees to your chest. Wrap around the knees. Give yourself a big hug. Knees to the chest. Wrap, wrap, wrap as tight as you can. There you go. Squeeze. Squeeze, squeeze, squeeze. Are you actively squeezing? Like I love my knees. Yes, <laughs> like you love your knees. <laughs> Go ahead and release and kind of just flop out wherever everything lands. Good. I will move the big bolster for you. <laughs> Sorry, got your toe. <laughs> All right, so relax in Shavasana. Just breathe. Letting the blood flow through the body without any restrictions, without holding anything. Try not to move. It's so tempting. <laughs> Relax your face. Let your jaw relax. That's an area that we tend to clench a lot. So feel free to stay here as long as you would like. Um, ideally, Shavasana in a restorative class could be five minutes, 10 minutes. Um, we, of course, ran out of time because I'm really good at running out of time, evidently. <laughs> um, so we are gonna slowly wake up. So wiggle your fingers, wiggle your toes. Give yourself a couple of circles with your ankles and your wrists. Which, my fingers and my finger toes. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Yeah, circle with both your fingers and your finger toes. <laughs> All right, roll over onto one side. Assume the fetal position. And then gently push yourself up to upright and come to a seated position. Okay, so how do you feel? Oh, like my hips got a little bit of a well, stretch slash workout. I, okay. I don't know how to say. Do you yeah, feel, I feel like my skin is, yeah, I feel like I stretched a whole lot. Do you feel calmer, more at peace, more loose? 
Yeah, definitely lose. Any all? Like I could go for a run right now. So like when I get up in the morning, I don't want to go running sometimes because mm -hmm. energy and everything. Like this is how I wish I felt when I woke up. <laughs> well, good. I hope you guys feel the same way. Uh, I hope that was helpful, especially if you are very, very tight um, and don't have a lot of flexibility or range of motion. Uh, and on Sunday, we will be back for our introductory all levels class, 10 o'clock Pacific time on Sunday. We'll see you then. Thank you very much. And if you're like me and you have tomorrow off, have a wonderful weekend. <laughs>